Now this is like two slides ago, but instead of being stained, it's like fresh lung tissue and looking at it with a phase contrast microscope. The phase contrast microscope is a magic thing that if something's bright, it takes all the light waves of that bright thing and puts them in phase with each other, which amplifies the brightness. If something is dark, it takes the light waves and puts them out of phase with each other, so they're crisscrossing each other, and they cancel each other out, and it becomes darker. So lightness becomes lighter, and darkness becomes darker through a phase contrast microscope. And that's why we get this luminous effect that we see here. And so there's our respiratory membrane. I think that's a macrophage. That's probably a type 2 cell. Okay. Uh, there's another macrophage down there, and so on. But these are beautiful examples of alveoli within the lung. Is there only one type 2 cell per? Oh, there's several type 2s per alveolus, I'm sure. Remember, this is a two-dimensional cut of three-dimensional spherical structures in there. Ah, look at that. Is that pretty, huh? Right, Lana? <laughs> really pretty, huh, Lana? Yeah. What is this? Smokies. This is emphysema. This is carbon particles, huh, Kim? Uh huh. Not that I would pick on the smokers in here, would I, Danielle? No, never. Huh? These are not alveoli. Each one of these is dozens of alveoli coalesced into a big, useless, dead air space. Okay? And then it's all crammed full of carbon particles. Okay? Now, now, I have to admit that the label on this thing did not say smoker. The label on this thing said a chimney sweep. One of those guys that goes around, you know, cleaning the soot out of chimneys and ends up with lots of carbon particles in his lungs. Um, but this also would represent a smoker's lungs. A little scary, isn't it? Hope it scares you to death. No. If a person was that far infected and put smoking, what would happen? It's going to stay this way. The question always is asked is, will this stuff heal itself? And emphysema, fibrosis, the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease that you form will not get better. Yeah, my uncle got put some 50 years ago and got it. Still got emphysema, absolutely. And, and let me, okay, I will be honest. I'll fess up on something here. I am harassing you smokers unmercifully about this. And it, the, the smoking will interact with your genetics. And some people smoke for years and years and years and suffer no real apparent damage. Other people smoke a while and get emphysema, COPD, all this stuff very quickly. Some people who never, ever smoke get emphysema. Okay, they get COPD because, uh, you know, the body just starts falling apart. Uh, I had a dear little old friend who was in her 90s and she had emphysema so incredibly bad. She had a huge oxygen tank in her house and had to breathe oxygen all the time and she had never smoked never done anything bad in her life she was a saint you know? and she had uh, COPD so you know it, it, it is one of those things that can happen environmental things can cause it uh, this guy is just inhaling lots of carbon particles because he's a chimney sweep painters inhale gobs and gobs of uh, fumes that damage the lungs. I mean, there are lots of things that can interact and that can do this. Okay? When I grind in my shop or when I paint, I have a respirator that filters out that stuff. Takes care of it. I don't want COPD. And that's the last slide in this batch. And we're going to be looking at uh, some charts and some models now. And so look at here and identify the cavity occupied by the pointer. The cavity is nasal cavity. Nasal cavity. The specific structure indicated is the superior nasal, superior nasal concha and the middle nasal, nasal concha, which are features of what bone? 
Ethmoid, Ethmoid bone. bone. And this bone is the inferior, inferior nasal concha. On a model we'll look at, we'll see there are openings under these concha. Okay? Uh, there's an opening under here from the ethmoid sinus in the meatus of the concha. There's an opening here from the frontal sinus and here from the maxillary sinus. And there's an opening here from the nasal lacrimal duct. And then uh, above the sinus, right here, there's an opening that goes into the sphenoid sinus. If we count them up, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve for the nares, thirteen, fourteen for the colani openings. There are fourteen openings of the nasal cavity. Identify the tissue indicated by the pointer. The tissue is? No! No, not Not non-keratinized stratified. No! What goes in here? Air. What kind of tissue is where there's only air? Ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelial tissue. Okay. Right. Okay. What kind of tissue is in here? Keratinized. Why? That's where I thought you were pointing. It was exposed to the world. Because this is the nasal vestibule, and you do what? You pick your vestibule. I was watching people this morning driving into school. <laughs> Thinking about today's review, okay? Um, okay, um, and so this opening to the outside here is called what? External nares. The opening through here is called what? Internal nares, a.k.a. Coani. Okay? Uh, identify this cavity. The pharynx. Identify this portion of the pharynx. Nasal pharynx. Nasal pharynx. This portion of the pharynx. Oral pharynx. This portion of the pharynx. Laryngopharynx. Okay? Um, identify this cartilage. Epiglottis. Epiglottis. Identify this membrane. Ooh. Ooh. Tougher question. Laryngeal. <laughs> laryngeal membrane. Nice try. This is the aryepiglottic fold. Oh, yeah. Okay. That goes from the arytenoid cartilage here up to the epiglottis. See, that's the edge of the aryepiglottic fold. Identify this cavity. This cavity is the? Larynx. No! It's the laryngeal vestibule. The vestibule here. See, 